Are electric skateboards fun and practical or are they lame and useless? Dalton says they're fun, but Andrew, an expert on e-bikes, e-scooters, one wheel, and electric unicycles says that e-skate can't even compare. But that may all change during this 10 minute video because Dalton's done the research, he's picked out a great beginner board in the Meepo V5 that he thinks can win over the Grinch of e-skate. It came in this giant box, but really, you just need this one. This is like a Russian doll egg. There's another box inside the box. Seems like a pretty solid packaging job. Let's get her out. We've got a QR code for the manual. Don't need that. Warning sign. Definitely don't need that. And then there's a physical manual as well. May need that. We've got the controller right here, which can be charged via USB-C. We've also got the USB-C for the remote. Comes with a pretty nice T-tool. Now the Meepo V5 comes in two different versions. I'll put the specs up right here. A smaller battery and a larger battery. The smaller battery is currently priced at $399 and the larger battery is priced at about $530. The main difference is really just gonna be your battery distance, 11 miles or 20 miles. If you get the larger version, it also comes with this three amp charger and the smaller one comes with a 1.5 amp charger. Both versions, it'll take under three hours to charge from empty to full. Just one is gonna give you more range. Now the board itself is super clean right out of the box. The larger battery version is just gonna be about three pounds heavier at 19 pounds, but it's not too bad at all to lift up and carry up some stairs. Now both boards hit a top speed of 28 miles per hour and both have a deck size of about 11 inches to 38 inches. The deck is made with an eight ply Canadian maple frame. And then you've got rubber stoppers here on the end to protect against smashing on curbs. It's powered by dual 500 watt motors in the rear. Flipping it over, we've got our shredder, 45 degree angle trucks, a charge port. If you've got the smaller version, it's a 144 watt hour battery or the larger battery version is a 288 watt hour battery. Back here is your controller with the power and an indicator to show your battery percentage. It has 90 by 60 millimeter wheels and both battery sizes for the Meepo V5 are IPX5 water resistance rated. Now Meepo did send over this board for us to review as well as some cool accessories like this backpack that you can strap the board onto and we'll give that a try later. However, this review is going to be brutally honest and we're going to do our best to answer the question, is this board great for beginners? And at its super budget friendly price, what kind of board and quality of board do you get? Now checking out this backpack, you can throw the remote in the charger there we go that's actually pretty nice i was concerned about my bodacious booty causing the board to bounce into the back of my head but that doesn't seem to be happening. So a pretty nice accessory that you may want. However, personally with the little handle that's built in, I doubt I'll use this backpack that much. I'm gonna go ahead and get it freshly charged, put on some safety gear, tell you what I love about it, what I hate about it, and should you get the Meepo V5. All right, it's freshly charged and Dalton's on the board. What's your first impression, Dalton? Honestly, off the bat, it feels pretty good. However, I'm already getting a ton of vibrations in my feet. I know that kind of happens with e-skates, but I'm curious to see how long I can ride before it gets uncomfortable. So it did just rain out here. Hopefully it's not going to rain again, but the board is rated at IPX5. So it can handle some light water. I wouldn't recommend submerging it or dealing with anything too extreme, but for wet roads like this, it'll be all right. So the Meepo V5 has four different speed modes. I'm on the second speed mode right now. The first one definitely is only getting you to maybe six miles per hour. And I think it increases the speed significantly for each mode. So as I warm up, I'm going to get all the way up to that speed mode level four, and I'll tell you how it is. Now the max speed on this is 28 miles per hour or for anybody who's not in America that's 48 kilometers an hour. If you just get in speed mode level four and get on this board the acceleration is going to be extremely fast so I think it's best that you work your way up in those different increments. All right so just now I took a super tight turn and I heard a high-pitched whine noise. I think what happened was one of the back wheels lifted up off the ground as I was taking a sharp turn and these motors are working separately not at the same pace and so the Therefore, one of the motors spun out super quick. Now, thankfully, I wasn't going fast at all, but it's something to be cautious about because if that wheel had touched back down on the ground at a high speed, it could have then jolted me and I wouldn't have been ready for that. I'm an avid snowboarder, but haven't really had a ton of interest in these skates simply because I'm big on one wheels, but I'm gonna give this a try and see how I like it. It 
you've never e-skated before and you've snowboarded, it's pretty easy to pick up on. I was able to turn immediately, understand like the physics behind it. The rear gets a little bit washed out while riding. So I think if I tighten down the trucks in the rear, that that would fix that. The front feels perfectly fine, but once you get up a little bit higher in speed, even though that I've been carving, I thought that would fix the issue, but instead the rear gets a little bit shaky. But we'll see if adjusting it will fix that issue. All right, let's take care of this little wobble. We've got the T-tool with us and we're gonna tighten up the back truck and see if that can help take care of some of that oscillation we're feeling back there. That made it a lot better, tightening the rear truck. No more of that weird feeling in the rear where it felt like it was gonna break loose. It feels nice and solid and a much better riding experience. So definitely fine tune it to your needs. But let's go ahead and just start talking about what we love about this product. The one thing for me is the price point. It's a great entry level for anybody to get into PEVs. I was really doubting that this was gonna be this much fun for the price point. I thought that this was gonna be kind of janky, slow at acceleration, feel weird underneath the foot. But honestly, it feels like I'm just snowboarding on land and it feels almost identical to the turn experience and the sensation so I do love that I'm getting turns now that the mountain is closed. I'd say one of my favorite things about this board is the flex of the deck. Obviously any e-skate board you're gonna feel vibrations, bumps, rocks, anything like that. However the flexiness of the deck one makes for smooth riding and carving feels very natural but also I think it absorbs just a little bit of those vibrations making it a slightly more pleasant ride. I see a lot of people online saying they really hate the built-in handle but personally I think it's an awesome feature especially Especially if I'm gonna be carrying these upstairs. This one weighs 19.7 pounds and then the smaller battery version weighs 17 pounds. But I think having the handle built in, it just makes it super light and nice and it's like you're carrying some groceries around. It's really portable. This is great for people who live in college campuses, people who live on third floors of apartment buildings just like Dalton or anybody who rides public transportation. This is great to get in and out of a bus with because it's so lightweight and has a handle. Also at an affordable price, 28 miles per hour is super fast. I'm actually very impressed with that. On top of that the trucks that this has they make for very nice turning it's super easy to adjust them and dial it in to how you like we just fixed it so that the wobble went away in the back and now it rides like a charm a one wheel gts has a quoted top speed of close to 28 miles per hour and costs about six times the cost of this board so pretty crazy that this is so affordable and able to get up to 28 miles per hour which there's not a lot of pvs that offer that at that price point adding on to the build quality the ipx5 rating is a huge win we've been going through puddles on the roads that are super Super wet as it just rained and we haven't noticed anything getting in having that ipx rating is super nice especially if you live on a college campus or downtown if it rains a little bit it doesn't mean your whole day is ruined just don't try and submerge it in water because it is only ipx5 one of the best parts about this board is if you were to run out of battery the board itself and the ergonomics of it it rides perfectly fine as a regular longboard so being able to kick and ride down the street it doesn't feel like you're hauling a massive battery or that the motors have resistance in the wheels it feels like a normal longboard and that's a huge plus in my book. We're going to keep riding and at our next stop we're going to tell you what we hate about the Meepo V5. So what do we hate about the Meepo V5? So one thing that I wish this thing had that a lot of the other e-skates have is lights. So this has no front facing light, no rear light, no RGBs that I can control. But for the price point, I completely understand why they don't have that on the board. They do have additional accessories under the Meepo V5 tab. You can add in your own brake lights. The board has an IPX5 water resistance rating, but the front has regular bearings. So although the board and the electrical components are slightly water resistant, I don't really think the front bearings are. So so you definitely want to be careful of riding this or any type of e-skate or skateboard in the rain because essentially bearings do get bad in wet conditions. This board is really affordable, but with affordability does come a couple downfalls. The one thing that I would say is that Meepo is based in China. The customer service is in China. You can't pick up the phone and call them. It all has to be done through email. Just understand there's a little bit of delay, but that's also why the prices are kept down on the Meepo boards. One issue that we've been seeing from quite a few people online is that they're saying that the motor covers have been falling off. Make sure you just double check on everything. That's not just with an e-skate, but with any PEV. Bolts come loose due to vibration. Make sure that you're just checking on all the bolts and that they're nice and tight and there's no weird movement inside of the wheels. And then speaking about the wheels, they're pretty soft and forgiving, but I wish they were a little bit softer. I understand for a budget e-skate that they're not going to come with the softest and most premium wheels. You can always pay to upgrade them, but I do wish these were just slightly softer than what they come with. For my first time riding an e-skate, I actually enjoyed it. I had fun and we just came off of snowboarding season, so it's a great time to pick up a summer sport. All right, we're gonna keep riding and answer the question, who should get the Meepo V5? 
So Dalton, who should buy the Meepo V5? The Meepo V5 is perfect for people looking to get into the e-skate space. It's well built, comes in at a great price, and rides super well. Make sure to check out our full written review at freshlycharged.com, and when you ride, wear your safety